Hey there, resellers. Welcome back to the channel, Eric the Vintage Hunter. And I got a really, um, I think is a special episode for you guys today. I get asked a lot, Eric, what are some things that I can buy? What are some vintage things that I should be keeping an eye out for? What should I be on the lookout for? And if you ever heard the term BOLO, that's what that term means. Be on the lookout for. So what I want to do today is I want to share some things that... I know our vintage, and these are things that I've recently sold on eBay. That means that if you find these things, you have the marketplace to sell them. A lot of stuff that I sell in my storefront isn't necessarily things that you would probably get the same amount of money for because there's a different kind of amount of, there's a different kind of traffic that comes to my storefront. There's a different kind of effort that goes into the presentation of items that go into my storefront. Stuff that we're going to cover today is actually things that you can probably keep an eye out for and you can also sell it on eBay if you find these things. I'm, I'm, I'm really excited to share some of this stuff with you. The way that I learned how to resell, and I, I'll just give you a little backstory. So just real quick i've been a reseller for about 20 years at this point and the way that i learned how to resell was actually from a third generation antique dealer so a lot of the stuff that i buy and sell is going to be vintage it's going to be antique type things it's also going to be things that most people probably won't even pay attention to and that's what makes it exciting for me to share with you is because some of these things you may not actually think you can resell and that they actually have, I should say, you may think you can, you would think you could resell it, but you will probably be surprised at what kind of value some of this stuff actually does have. First up, you'll always hear me talk about vintage Christmas. That's one of the things that I think you can sell year round. So when I saw this uh, vintage candy container, that's, I, I knew it was something worth looking at. The reason that I was originally drawn to it was the celluloid face to say if you see older Christmas items like this with the face being a different material, whether it's bisque or celluloid or um, what's another one? It could be um, anyways. I can't think of it right now. The point is, if the face of whatever it is that you're looking at in this vintage Christmas looks a little different, you might want to take a closer look at it. So I sold this piece for $40.79. I love selling antique and ornate uh, picture frames. Doesn't have to be anything inside of them, just the frame itself. Um, the more ornate, the better, especially if it's carved with wood or if it's all brass. I'm gonna give you two examples of picture frames that I recently just sold on eBay. Here's what they sold for. As strange as it may sound, <laughs> Empty boxes sell. People will buy empty boxes. So, you know, keep that in mind when you are out looking at things, whether it's at a garage sale, a thrift store, or, you know, um, an estate sale. Pay attention to empty boxes because the right empty boxes can sometimes more money than the item actually is worth. So I sold this empty box from the 1960s, somewhere around that area. Uh, and this is actually for a slot car. So this is for a toy. One of the categories that I tell everybody to pay attention to is vintage toys. But I sold this box, $42.13. Pay attention to the boxes. So now we're warmed up. I gave you what, two, three, two or three um, so far to get us started. So I'm going I'm to ramp it up now and let's get through these a little faster. Obviously, fashion is, is a big part of what's happening in the resale industry. A lot of clothes. A lot of things like that. So keep an eye out for belt buckles. Belt buckles can yield you pretty good return on investments. Usually you can find these things for less than a dollar and you can get a really, you can usually make a really good profit on belt buckles. So pay attention to belt buckles. I sold this belt buckle for $53. Older wood decoys, which you're looking for usually, and this is just a general type of thing that you want to keep in mind when you're looking for these decoys. You know, you're looking for little things like glass eyes. That's usually a telltale sign that it may be a little bit better than um, just the normal, you know, duck decoy that's just, you know, carved by Joe Schmo. So keep an eye, look out for glass eyes, keep an eye out for um, things that are larger too. Usually the larger decoys are, I don't see a lot of those. So anything that's of substantial size, uh, I'm usually paying a little bit more attention to it. Cigarette lighters are one of those things that, uh, you know, I think there's collectors of everything and cigarette lighters 
is no different. You, there's uh, Zippo lighters. I think a lot of people know about Zippo lighters, but if you don't, I'm here to tell you Zippo lighters is a good thing to sell. Uh, the other thing is these lighters that look like old games, where they actually had functions to them. And that's what you'll see right here on the screen is a lighter that, you know, you could play a game while smoking. So keep an eye out for it, the, those kind of lighters because they do sell for really good money. So I got $57.66 for a lighter this big, like tiny little lighter. Dow House Furniture. It never ceases to amaze me. Sometimes I can sell a piece of dollhouse miniature furniture for more than I could sell the same item in real life. Like if I had the real life version of this toy, I would probably have to give it away. I think the, the dump actually charges you when you bring in TVs, at least our local dump. I don't know about where you're at, but our local dump, they charge us when we want to bring in TVs to dispose of. So this item, I could not have gotten... Um, what did I get for it? I couldn't have got $75 for this TV in real life and this rack in real life. What's even more crazy about this is this piece, um, actually, we bought this on a Saturday. Me and my wife were out just kind of rummaging around and we stopped at a random estate sale and this, we saw the TV. So we bought the TV because we thought the TV would be cool for our store. As we're driving away, my wife looks up the TV and she's like, hold on, there's supposed to be a stand. So we make a U-turn and come back around because we, we see what the comps are going for. Let's come back around and we grab the stand. And so I think we had a dollar fifty in this whole ordeal and it went for that kind of money. So pay attention to Dow House Miniatures. I've had some really good home runs with that stuff. Pez Dispensers. Have you guys seen... Or has anybody watched that Netflix special on Pez? The one guy that's just like literally behind this whole craze that hit America. Anyways, um, look for the stuff that doesn't have feet. Not all one, not everyone that doesn't have feet is going to be special. The fact that these two didn't have feet is what got my attention. That's all I'm sharing with you is that's what draw, drew my attention to these um, Pez dispensers is the fact that they didn't have feet and I was like you know what I'll gamble on those so if you can buy them cheap or if you can find some comps I would say definitely pay attention to Pez with no feet. I mentioned early in the video that I learned I learned so much from um, the the third generation antique dealer that, 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 I, that I came in the business under um, and one of the things I learned was architectural items. People pay for architectural stuff. When I say architectural, I'm talking stained glass windows. I'm talking, um, you know, for this instance, hardware, door hardware, like this door, a door plate and a door knob. That's it. Not even two, just one. You got to pay attention to that kind of stuff. That's one of those be on the lookout items that I don't know if a lot of people actually pay active attention to it because... Some of that stuff can go for thousands of dollars. I didn't get thousands for this one, but I literally pulled this off of a wall inside of an estate sale. Had it as decoration inside the house. I just unscrewed it, two screws off the wall, and I stuck it on eBay and I got $106 for it. That's crazy. The other one I stuck on there too from the same house. I got um, like 44, 45 bucks for that one. It's a larger item to stick online, but it is a piece that will sell and that's vintage antique spice cabinets this was a larger than usual spice cabinet that i found and um i pulled this one right off the wall too actually inside of a home and when i say that is like you, sometimes you go to estate sales or you go to a garage sale and things are um, organized and they're presented in a way that you can just pick it up and leave but sometimes you go to places and things aren't necessarily for sale but you see things and you're like, hey, can I buy that? And that was one of these um, type instances. So pulled it right off the wall. Uh, the size of it was what drew me into it. I knew that smaller versions of that kind of spice cabinet I've sold in the past, never really had anything of that size or of this size. And so that's what drew me into it. Um, I would say definitely pay attention to spice cabinets. Uh, things that look a little bit more handmade, more primitive. Uh, that's the kind of stuff that is going to really fetch you some decent money. So I'm not mad. $119.50 for something I'm sure I pay less than 20 bucks for it.
the crazy thing about reselling is you're always, you still always get surprises. You always get things that you didn't expect to them to go for as much as they do go for, you know, some crazy number. There are things that go for less than what you expect them to go for. And that's the nature of resale. I should say that's the nature of resale when you're in an auction style format. Now, if you're doing buy it now, or if you have your set price and you're accepted offers, that's a different kind of way of playing. The way I resell on eBay is I start everything usually at 99 cents or 9.99 and it sells to the highest bidder. So I'm always kind of rolling the dice to see what's going to happen here, right? And it, with that being said, again, you're going to get some things that just surprise me. And this this last piece, this is the last one I want to tell you guys about on this video. And I hope that you have enjoyed the video so far. Um, this last one was a surprise piece. Now, I bought out a partial estate. Um, that's what I do. I go in and I make offers on one piece or we buy everything. And so this house I had picked through a bunch of stuff had a huge pile in the living room of all the things I was going to buy. And I end up uh, buying, I think I spent 14, 1500 bucks or something like that to that effect on um, all the stuff that I bought. And in that pile was this deck of cards. And I thought the deck of cards was cool just because it was from the 60s. It was NFL. Um, that's really the only thing that drew me to it is the fact that it was NFL. It was from the 60s. And that was enough to say, you know what, I'm going to put it in my pile. It, it fits my vibe. It fits my store vibe. If it it's me, it just, it was perfect. So grabbed it, put it in my pile. Stick it on eBay at the end of the day, not the end of the day, but I stuck it on eBay and that pack of cards, mind you, when I opened it, I found out that there was one that was, it was two sets of cards in there. One was brand new and one was not brand new. Always look for the new old stock, the stuff that has never been opened. I didn't realize it was one in there, but there was one that had never been opened. So listed the whole thing on ebay it sold for 192 dollars that's one of them bolos that i'm like i thought i didn't realize that it was that good of a bolo i will keep my eyes open for the rest of my life as a reseller looking for another set of those cards because that's how it goes once you understand what you are looking for or once you have sold it um it becomes like clear. You start to see these things everywhere. And so, you know, me telling you some of these bolos, me sharing some of this stuff with you, I'm not the guy that's going to get on here and tell you what I pay for everything. That's, I you know, will tell you that sometimes, but the value in a video like this, the value in researching and understanding what you're looking at is it extends your life in this resale business. Every piece that I learn about, every piece that um, I resell. It not only financially extends my life, but mentally, the knowledge that you gain, you can't take that from me. You can't take that away from me. You know what I mean? So my wife said it today. We were on, we were at an estate pick and she's like, I just admire watching you work because your brain, how you remember what certain things are, what values are, that comes with time, that comes with understanding what you're looking at. And I'm hoping that videos like this will help you to understand what you're looking at. And when you start to understand it, you're going to start to see things out here. And it's going to be so clear that, oh, there's money to be made right there. There's money to be made right there. It'll happen. Once you find some of this stuff that I've shown you, um, you know, if you're going to list this stuff online. My advice to you is just is to take the best pictures possible. Descriptions, that's awesome. You can write, I mean, AI can write a description for you, but take good quality pictures of the items that you're reselling. That's how I've learned how to resell. I am not the guy that's going to write a novel. I'd rather give you 24 pictures. That's my two cents on <laughs> creating a quality listing. That is a wrap on this video for items that you should be on the lookout for that are vintage that you can resell on eBay and turn some kind of profit on them. I seriously hope that you're feeling like really inspired to get up and go on the hunt looking for some new and unique things that you may not have thought that you could resell, um, but you see potential in them now after watching a video like this. I've come to the understanding that um, with a keen eye 
for quality and you know understanding what you're looking at there are not many places that you will be able to go to that you won't be able to make money and that's a very powerful thing to be in this resale business is versatile keep that in mind keep learning keep selling because that's the number one way that you learn is you learn by what you pay for something and what you sold it for um, those kind of things you retain so keep learning keep selling Keep flipping and keep flipping. We'll see you on the next one.